One unconventional idea is a type level TypeScript program that I see from time to time. What it does, it pipes a value through a list of functions by applying that value to the first function, then applying the result to the second function and so on. Don't you think that for such a simple task, it is quite a heavy beast? I think so. If you think so too, instead, let's consider an approach that is much simpler. One that does not work on the level of types, but very simple on the level of data. Ladies and gentlemen, the pipe forward operator. What it does, it applies a value x to a function f. <laughs> that sounds so trivial. <laughs> it's a no-brainer. And it is. Plus, it enables us to write pipelines like so. There's a list. Take the maximum, convert it to a string, append a kiss, transform it into a friendly message. I love this. This is really wonderful. And there's an insightful talk by Scott Vlaschen that explains why pipeline-oriented programming is so important. We will go another way today. A good language is not bloated with features. It is based on a handful of simple ideas that mix together unleash an incredible power. What's behind that single line that enables us to write such precise pipeline style code? There are four players in the game. Let's break it down. Number one, infix functions, a thought experiment. Let's say we would like to concatenate strings with the plus operator. Imagine there was no such operator defined. That's not a problem at all, because we can easily define it ourselves, like so. Turns out, the plus operator is just a function. A function that takes two strings and returns a new string. The only difference is that the function name is not a sequence of letters, but is a sequence of special characters. We can call the function, like any other function, just by using parentheses. That's one way to call it. There's another way to call it, using infix notation. Here's the recipe for infix notation. Put the first argument on the left side of the operator and the second argument on the right side. It already is now. And don't put any parentheses around the operator. We can repeat that for the remaining plus operator to finally arrive at our goal. I claim for this problem, the infix notation is much easier to read and understand because the code representation of the problem is congruent with A, its verbal description, and B, with the final result. Because I don't say, I concatenate. I concatenate A, B, C. <laughs> what? But I say, I concatenate A and B and C. There's an important takeaway. Even if we can achieve the same result, the syntax that we use to express an idea has a huge impact on understanding things. All right, that was infix functions. Let's move on to type inference. Although type inference is not strictly required, it is extremely useful in this and in other cases. You might have noticed the code we wrote before looks like it's dynamically typed, but it is not dynamically typed, it is statically typed. Why isn't the code polluted with type annotations all over the place then? Because there's no reason to do so. We already told what things are just by using them. There's a function pipe forward that takes two arguments, x and f. We can infer that f must be a function. Why? because we call f with x, so it must be a function. x is of whatever type. Why? Because we don't say anything about it. It's unconstrained. The function argument of f must be the same whatever that is x. Why? Because we apply x to f and we can't pass bananas to something that only expects raspberries. f then returns whatever type. But it is not necessarily the same whatever, which is the whatever of x. And the whole pipe forward operator then returns the same whatever, 
as f returns. The compiler sees exactly that. Pipe forward is a function type. It takes a value of whatever type a. It takes a function that itself needs a value of type a and returns a value of type b. And the whole thing returns a value of whatever b. But the f -sharp compiler draws all these conclusions out of some formal rules. And this works for all the code we write. It even delivers the most general form of types and it warns us if we are too specific with our assumptions. This is a killer. If you want to know how exactly this is working, in the upcoming videos we will together engineer a language that has all the stuff baked in that we are talking about here. All right, let's move along. Next step, currying. Currying sounds very delicious. Currying is the process of transforming a function that takes n arguments into n functions where each of that function takes one argument. Example, a function with three arguments. We can transform that to a function that only takes one argument, a, that returns a function that takes only one argument, b, that returns a function that takes only one argument, c, that finally is a closure that can access a, b and c and returns the final value. That is what the signature of both versions tell us. They have type int to int to int to int, which means this is a function that takes an int, that returns a function that takes an int, that returns a function that takes an int, that returns an int. The two functions are therefore equivalent. When we write this, the compiler automatically carries the function for us, so we do not have to do it manually. We, as programmers, why do we care? One reason is that we can use it to parameterize functions. That leads us to the next ingredient, partial function application. Now that we know that functions only take one argument, we can apply a single value to that one argument function and be satisfied with it, whatever we get out of it. Whatever we get out of it can be a value. Values can be functions. If it is a function, we can do that partial application thing that we just did again and again and again. You get it. Let's revisit our plus operator from the infix function section. But this time, let's give it a name and call it append string. Append string is a function that takes a string as one and it returns a function that takes another string as two that returns a new string. We can make a special version out of it that always appends whatever string to a kiss. Now, two ways of looking at this. First, we have parameterized the append string function with an initial kiss. The second, we built kiss something. To make it finally clear, let's align the definition of append string with its usage. Now it's clear that kiss is a function that needs the missing as true as an argument. Parametrization is the thing here. We can utilize it in our pipeline too. Let's bring it all together. We have infix functions, type inference, currying and partial function application. We can now define the pipe forward operator and the first part of our example and see what's going on. The value x is a list of integers. It's on the left side of the pipe operator because the pipe operator is an infix function. Therefore, on the right side, there's the other argument. In our case, list.max. x is applied to f, means the list of integers is passed to the max function. Next two string comes into play. The result so far is the x for the next function in the pipeline. The next function in the pipeline is two string. Continuing with a parameterized function, append string is a pipeline step that is parameterized with our kiss and the result from the previous pipeline step is passed into it. This of course can be repeated as often as we like. Also with error functions or lambdas, call them whatever you want. Now you see all this comes at no cost. We can write functions, take them and use them in a pipeline. Although 
every language has capabilities that allow for composition. They differ in their expressiveness. Appropriate ways of expressing composition determines how clearly we understand our code and how much we are distracted when we are writing it. The code we write is not only a reflection of the mental image we have of the problem, it is a distinct part of that whole thing. You cannot separate it completely. This is one of the reasons why it's so important having language elements that allow for expressing precisely what we mean. In the majority of languages we use today, suitable forms of composition are still not very well supported. That means to achieve good composable code, extra effort is required. However, some languages strive for zero-cost composability, having understood that this is extremely important. We learned that using languages that are based on a handful of concise ideas are extremely expressive, yet simple. If your brain is smoking now, don't worry and just chill because you can try these things out on your own. Sometimes we have to try things to find evidence. Try it out, have fun and happy coding.